Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. It's game on, we're on the water, stand up paddleboard day. Second mission for Sherry, my wife. So hopefully we stay above the water. Today's aim is a simple session. We've got a bit of running tide, so we're gonna get up on the flats and see if we can knock off her first fish and christen her stand up paddleboard. So fingers crossed, join us on the journey. Uh, later on, we'll talk more about the gear that we're using and how we're set up for fishing the flats. Just a simple setup with a couple of light spin rods and a little bag of gear. So stay tuned for more details, fish on. That is a solid grunter on the flats, eh? Two and a half inch slim swims, quarter ounce head. Still fishing a quarter ounce head, even though we're only in two foot of water. What that does is it allows us long casts on the flats and then we just keep the rod tip up, wind it, keep it moving quick. These guys aren't up here for a holiday. They're up here because the water's pushing up on the flats and they want to come up here and actively feed. So not worried about retrieving a little bit quicker in the shallow water because these blokes are going to be up here looking for something to eat. That's a pretty solid grunter up on the flats. Beast. Beautiful fish. Check that guy out. Nice job, baby. First fish in the sup. What do you reckon? Oh, uh, he's a bit small. He's a bit small, <laughs> but he's still pretty cool. He can grow a bit and yeah. then we'll get him again. <laughs> Any first is awesome though. And a first, first of a new species, first on a new watercraft, whatever it might be. Awesome work. I am super stoked, proud of you. Balancing on the sup and catching a fish. Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, Brimbo. He's a good flat fish. I flicked right up on the weed edge there. Rattle, rattle, rattle. And then I saw him eat it. That was really cool. That was awesome. Brilliant. Play him nice and easy. Yeah, he's still cranky. You might pull the hook, he's only just hooked. Rattle, rattle, rattle. He gave it a couple of rattles. I could have pulled it away from him. That's one thing with when you're fishing these slim swims with that paddle tail. I never try and rip it away from the fish if I get a rattle. I just keep it roll it, keep it rolling, and then boom, they just they find their way onto it. That's a nice flat fish. Try and swing him around into the net. Come on, buddy. Beautiful. Nice flat. He is angry. Nice little flatty. Nice little flatty. Again, on that little demon's head, two and a half inch slimy. Good dinner size fish, that one. Nice dinner size. We'll drop him back in the drink and we'll go in and catch up with Sherry. So there we go, folks. How cool is that? Just a quick little stand up paddleboard session. So nice flatty. To finish it off, we'll have that little guy for dinner, probably mid 40, something like that. So our aim today was to get down here on the on the last of the run in. We pretty much had maybe an hour and a half on the water, and we knocked off two brim, a grunter, and a flatty. Uh, Sherry christened her stand-up paddleboard. Nice job. So only a little brim, but still, that's you know all it is is about getting out there on the water. And for us christening this, I'm super proud of her because stand-up paddleboarding's 
pretty new to her, only second trip out. So last time I think she beat me in the fish numbers, so I got it today, but pretty cool to come out, have a grunt eye and a flatty for dinner, a couple of smaller brim that we released, and just keeping it simple out on the flat. So the weather says get off the water because the wind is coming and a potential storm as well. So we're gonna quickly rip this stuff out, get back to the shed, and I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the gear that worked for us today on this quick little stand-up paddleboard session. Fish on. Pretty nice day out on the water. We're just on our paddle home, beat the storm, but yeah, pretty cool session. A couple of brim and a legal grunter and a legal floody in quick time, only an hour or so down there fishing, but yeah, awesome, fish on. All right, folks, we are back from our cool little session out on the SUPS. Everything's washed down, packed away in the shed, ready for the next adventure. Uh, I would say mission successful on that one. So the aim of our mission, as I said at the start, was to get out there and to Christen Sherry stand up paddle board. So the first adventure we just went on a bit of a paddle. This was our first fishing adventure and I really wanted to get her onto a fish for the for the first trip. So awesome work from her. She didn't get a big one, but save that for next time. She got herself a brim that was almost I'd say it was probably pretty close to legal, but we, we generally let the bulk of the brim go anyway if we keep any at all. So that one's back in the water. We did get a nice grunter to kick things off, so we've kept that for a feed and we also got a flatty at the end there that we've kept for a feed. So a couple of feeds of fish and a couple of brim that we we let go to fight another day. Uh, good fun out on the flats there. So when we're gearing up for stand-up paddleboard or kayak adventures, we always try and keep it nice and light is the main thing because you don't want to be carting a huge amount of gear out on those watercraft, especially when there's you know there's water around you in the yak and the stand-up paddleboard at times. So so the gear may get a little bit wet as well. So for me, I keep everything packed up in a dry bag and that, that's nice and simple. I can have my sunscreen, my fishing tackle, my scent, my leader, a couple of snacks and bits and pieces in that dry bag. The other cool thing is if I roll it up and leave a bit of air in there, if it does fall into the water, it's gonna float as well. So I'm not gonna lose my gear. So in terms of gear for us on this trip, we had a couple of combos did the damage. So the other thing about stand up paddle boarding and kayak fishing. So in the boat, I've got some flash rods, some flash reels and that sort of thing but I like to keep it basic on the stand-up paddleboard and also in the kayak. So in terms of rods and reels, that was Sherry's rod and reel, this was my rod and reel for the session. So in terms of price points and those sorts of things, I was running the Aria single ball bearing reel. So that reel retails for around that $30 to $40 mark. So absolute bargain little reel. And it's caught me some awesome fish, including an 80 centimeter flatty. So absolute big, you know, we'll still catch big fish, but it's just a really good little basic one ball bearing reel. 30 to 40 bucks, you've got a reel. I've got it loaded with 10 pound platypus platinum braid, which we had on both of those combos, and fishing 10 pound platypus stealth leader. So 10 pound leader, you still get your brim and those sorts of things, but it's that good bit of backup in case you do hook a nice flathead. Uh, I had that on the Helios SX spin rod. So that's a really classy little rod. That's three to six kilo, seven foot two piece. And that rod is around that $110, $120 for a rod. So $110, $120 rod, $30, $40 reel, load it with braid and you're ready to rock and roll. And that's a great little combo, caught me a lot of fish. Uh, Sherry stepped up a little bit in reel, so she's running the Akuma Alaris. So the Akuma Alaris is around that sort of $50 to $60 mark for the reel. And one of my favourite series of rods from Akuma, that Seros range of rods. So the Seros rods are around that $120, $130 mark. Both of these rods, 30 ton Torre graphite blank, so lots of feel. So even though we're keeping it pretty basic in terms of the reels with a one ball bearing and a three ball bearing, you know, sub $60 price points on the reels, the rods we step up a little bit so that you've got that feel, you've got that casting power and everything you need in those. So Sherry is run, Sherry's running the two to four kilo Seros. I've got the three to six kilo Helios SX on that one there. So both of those combos, Excellent for starters, for those wanting to catch a few brim, flathead, those sorts of things, grunter. Uh, in terms of plastics and jig heads on here, we were running quarter ounce 10 Demons jig heads. So they're a painted jig head with an eye in them. And I like those when I'm up on the flats for grunter and that sort of thing, extremely realistic looking jig head. And that 10 is a, is a fine enough hook for pinning pretty much everything you come across. So that's a quarter 10 Demons jig head, 
that's in the gold colour, but I like the green colour and there's plenty of other colours you can use. And we fish the Slim Swims. Two and a half inch Slim Swims is a great plastic because it'll, it'll take your whiting, your brim, your, your smaller species, but also a big flatty will eat a two and a half inch Slim Swims as well. So the 80 centimetre flathead I got a little while ago ate that same Slim Swims. So you kind of hedge your bets a bit. If I'm purely chasing flathead, I'll probably throw a three inch minnows. If I'm wanting to hedge my bets and also chase brim and grunter and stuff, I'll drop it back to that two and a half inch Slim Swims, which is an awesome plastic, versatile plastic for fishing. Uh, the river and estuary sort of systems. So for us, we were just fishing in 60 centimetres of water through to maybe a metre. And the trick was we just throw long casts and we give it, once it hits the water, give it a couple of hops just to make sure it doesn't bury itself in the weed. And then it's just a fairly steady roll with the rod tip up because if, you, if you're hitting the bottom, you're going to catch weed. So we really want to keep that rod tip up. And if you start to hit the weed, you can wind a bit quicker or you can give it a couple of quick, quick rips just to rip it out of the weed and get it up off the bottom again. For me, when I'm up fishing 60 centimetres to a metre of water, this, this ground is normally out of water at low tide. So the fish that are there are going to be coming up to feed on those flats. So they're, they're feeding actively, so I don't mind retrieving the lure a little bit quicker. So in the bag, we've got our 10 pound stealth leader, good to go. We've got some slim swims, I've got some three inch minnows, and the other two plackies that I also have in the kit that I throw a fair bit up on those flats, is the 2.5 inch TRD craws and the 2.75 inch TRD bugs. So they're my presentation when I really want to slow it down, stop that rolling and I want to stop it and I want to hop and I want to pick those pockets in the sand in, the, in amongst the weed, I'll change it up. So I'll often carry two rods and I'll have a slim swims on one for rolling and I'll have either the TRD craws or TRD bugs for when I see those big sandy pockets in the weed and I want to hop it to try and get a flatty out of there. So those guys being buoyant, they'll stand up and wave their arms around and attract the fish to them. Key thing to remember with the TRD bugs, 2.75, when you get them out of the packet, those bigger claws are joined together. So you need to pop them apart so that you get maximum movement out of that plastic when it's in the water. So that's our TRD bugs and TRD crawls. I always sent up my plackies. So I've got a few there. These are the scents we're running today. Mullet, inshore salt water and sardine pilchard Procure super gel. Always a good starting point. Those three are, are real favourites. Our demon's head, our slim swims. I have a tray with me. And this is a, a tray of jig heads and some pre-rigged plastics. So in this side here, I've got some 3.0 size jig heads to cover the three inch minnows. I've got some 1.0s that I like to fish in the slim swims. And I've also got some Ned Locks. So I can fish that Ned rig, that stand up style fishing, that Ned Locks fishing. So in here I have some 1 tenth some one fifth and some one sixth Ned Locks in a variety of colors to pair up with those TRD plastics that I'm fishing. So that Ned rig is awesome fun to just hop and twitch and shake through those pockets and also up around the mangrove edges. Uh, and as I said, the three O's for the three inch minnows. And then on the other side there, I've got a few plackies from previous sessions and they're just in there ready to go. And also I have some weedless jig heads to fit those plastics that I've already mentioned. So I've got some size two in a snake locks finesse and I've got some size 3 in a in a snake lock standard that the heavier hook so they're ready to go I've got a few plackies ready to go and jig head weights in here will range from around about I don't, I don't fish super light because I'm running and gunning a bit so jig head weights for me in here will range from probably I'll have 1 8 1 6 1 quarter and then in my 3-0 I will also have some three eights for the three inch minnows for as that tide drops out, if I want to come out off that ledge and fish those deeper channel edges as well. A couple other handy tools. You definitely want some line snips for rigging. Keep them handy. I like to just put them in my handle section, that little handle insert in the stand up paddle board. So I keep them handy along with my scent. And also you want a decent pair of sunnies if you're fishing from a kayak or from a stand up paddle board. Because today my fish came from rolling over the good looking broken bottom and also the flatty at the end came from picking a weed edge. I could see the differentiation between the weed and the sand thanks to a decent pair of polarized sunnies. So definitely an important tool for you out on your adventure as well. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed our little stand up paddleboard fishing session. We got a few fish. We weren't out there for very long. So looking forward to get back, getting back out there again uh, when we get some good bit of weather. Uh, grab yourself a little bundle of plastics, a tray with some assorted jig heads in there, bit of scent, couple of light combos. You don't have to go crazy for price. Awesome value for money in those Akuma combos. Get out there, have a crack, stand up paddleboard, kayak, boat, 
fish off the bank, it doesn't matter. You're better off out there fishing than sitting on the couch at home, that's for sure. See you on the water.